The International Olympic Committee says the goal of the Olympic movement is to build a peaceful and better world. But in China, hosting the event is reportedly used to justify something else. We hear from a Chinese-American architect about what the games in Beijing have cost him and his family, both this year and in 2008. Here's more. The year was 2008. Simon Zhang was in Xi'an, China, watching the Beijing Olympics opening ceremony on TV. It's fantastic. The opening looks fabulous. Almost every major country's leaders went there. It's like a huge banquet celebrating unity. But to me, when I was watching that fabulous ceremony, I was thinking of my mom, what she was doing, and how, what was she suffering. On that day, his mother, Ji Yuanzhi, was enduring one of her 150 days in a Chinese labor camp. She is a practitioner of Falun Gong, a spiritual discipline wildly popular in China before 1999. That's when Beijing launched a persecution campaign against it, aiming to eliminate it from the country. Ji was beaten, slapped, force-fed, and made to do forced labor, stripping ears of corn so prison guards can sell them to nearby farms. Uh, she almost died there. The Olympics, an event supposed to celebrate peace and human rights, was used by the Chinese regime to launch arrests and persecute dissidents, plus religious and ethnic minorities, all in the names of maintaining so-called social stability when foreigners flooded in for the games. Amnesty International found that more than 100 Falun Gong practitioners died during 2008 from torture and other abuse while in detention or shortly after release. But those reports didn't stop China from hosting this year's Winter Games. Three days before the Beijing Winter Olympics kicked off, Zhang's mother was arrested again, grabbed from her home by Chinese police in front of her husband. That day was also the start of the Lunar New Year holiday, an occasion for celebration and family reunion. She's going through a hunger strike right now. And she's 65. She's health is not really good because of the uh, persecution that happened to her in the past 20 years. And we, we are really worried. This is the third time Ji has been taken away by police. The first was in 2001. I remember the day that we went to the, the local transportation center to bring her back home. She became so light. So she was, she was uh, like 160 pounds before, uh, before she was arrested. When I was 16 years old, uh, I put her on my back to move her into the house. She was really light. That's what I remember clearly. And the way she talks to me, she, she was really weak. Yet the suffering hasn't changed Ji's heart. She's uh, naturally uh, warm-hearted. She's really nice. She is uh, a core of all the re relative, uh, relatives of my family. So she organized the family events. But on the other hand, she's, we sometimes say she's stubborn. Because once she thinks something is right, she will not give up. Zhao moved to New York in 2013 and now works as an architect. He had tried but failed repeatedly to move his mom out of China. That's because Chinese authorities refused to issue her a passport. He shares a message for those outside China. Don't be fooled by the propaganda of the Chinese regime. People are living happily there. Everyone is respected. That is totally a lie. And uh, my mom, my family is a good example of the opposite thing. Penny Joe, NTD News.